Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Monsters Club, a Japanese drama from 2011 that was directed by Toshiaki Toyoda. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you should be familiar with his name by now. Having abandoned modern civilization, Ryoichi lives an isolated, self-sufficient life on a snow-covered mountain and sends mail bombs to the CEOs of corporations and TV networks. One day, he encounters a mysterious entity in the forest. That night, his older brother, who had committed suicide, appears before him at his cabin. The apparition takes Ryochi beyond a door where he is reminded about his family past. So, the really fascinating thing about the premise of Monsters Club is that it's essentially like a Japanese parallel to the anti-industrial philosophy of Ted Kaczynski, known as the Unabomber. And per Wikipedia, at least, between 1978 and 1995, he killed three people and injured 23 or others in a nationwide bombing campaign in America against people he believed to be advancing modern technology and the destruction of the environment. And he issued a social critique opposing industrialization and advocating a nature-centered form of anarchism. So that's the Wikipedia summary of this guy in a nutshell. So our main character in Monsters Club, a Japanese character, is similar in many ways to this real-life person. Now, the director Toyota explores these themes in a pretty dramatic way. It's not a thriller, all right? It's a deliberately paced, dialogue-driven film and most of the discussions take place between our main character and his family members. Now, some of these people are still living, and they visit him at his cabin in the middle of the woods, while others are actually dead, and they're visiting him from beyond the grave. And Toyota's movies can get a little bit odd, and this one is a bit odd. Uh, there is actually a slight horror vibe to this, I think, especially during those few scenes involving the mysterious entity. But again, this is mostly a drama. And the heart of the film, in terms of content, are the monologues of the main character's observations and kind of like philosophical kind of uh, thoughts on humanity, technology, and flaws of society. Definitely some interesting stuff here that, uh, that's put on the table for, for uh, discussion. And it makes the movie memorable for sure because there's you know not a lot of films that are are willing to do this type of thing, right? Now, as an added bonus, we also get some everyday living scenes in the woods, like hunting, chopping wood, stuff like that. In terms of atmosphere, there are tons of snowy mountain and forest environments. I mean, basically, the entire film takes place there. So this is a good movie to watch during the winter months. And there's one random observation I'd like to add. One character in the film actually drinks... Lafroig scotch right out of the freaking bottle which is the perfect drink when it's ice cold outside so I just I couldn't I was like this guy's going hardcore here he's not even like sipping it out of a glass he's just like chugging it out of the bottle uh, the music is very good in the film as well now our lead actor here is Eita and I became a fan of his right around the time that Monsters Club came out I mean his career started back in like 2001 but I really began to notice him in the early 2010s because that's when I happened to kind of catch up with some of his movies and TV shows. Uh, one highlight is Season of Snow from 2008, which was a big one for me. That, that kind of solidified my fandom for the guy. He's a reliable actor, engaging to watch. He gives another good performance in Monsters Club. You also get Jun Kunimura in kind of a cameo role. And Yosuke Kubozuka has a supporting role. Not a familiar name to most Western viewers. Uh, I recognize him from uh, Madness in Bloom. It was like a ga crazy like gangster flick from the early 2000s. He was also in Tokyo Tribe. So you might recognize him from that as well. But every time I see him in a movie, I, I see him as the Madness in Bloom guy. But uh, yeah, that's the movie I associate him with. But he's good in this too. Now, in terms of length, Monsters Club is a shorter film. It's only 72 minutes long, and it's just about the perfect length if you consider its deliberate pacing and the themes they're exploring. 
And if you're thinking about watching the film, the only thing that I really need to, uh, I guess, warn you about is that I would really classify this as an art house drama in terms of its pacing, how it's presented. You know, it's kind of slow. It's kind of weird. You know, so if you don't like slow, weird movies, you might want to skip it. <laughs> All right. But if you like that style of film, check it out. Now, if you want to explore Toyota's filmography, like if you... If you're hearing about this director and you want to start watching his stuff, I still think like Blue Spring and Nine Souls are probably the best introductions to him as a director. And then if you like those and you move on to his other stuff, you, then you check out Hanging Garden, Tokyo Rampage, and Monsters Club, I think would be the next three. So I do recommend this. Just know what you're getting into. All right. It's currently available on Region B Blu-ray. It's included within that that third window films box set that I showcased in my recent Asian movie collection update. I'm not sure if you could find some of these films elsewhere, uh, especially Hanging Garden and Monsters Club, because these are kind of more recent uh, English-friendly releases. So, again, I do think the box sets are worth they're worth picking up if you want to explore the director, because they contain most of his movies, or at least a good chunk of them. And as always, we will see you next time.